In video 4, we explain the importance of properly positioning the distributor drive shaft during the buildup of the Type 1 engine. We also showed how to disassemble the drive shaft when the engine is built up and when the crankcase halves are split. We will show in this video how to mount the drive shaft in the engine crankcase, both when the engine is built up and when the crankcase halves are split. In video 4 we removed the washers from the crankcase with a magnet. These washers are also called shims because they are used for shimming, which is the adjustment of the clearance. You can reuse the old shims if they are of the correct thickness and show no signs of wear or oxidation. Given the low cost of new shims, we will use new ones. In both cases, you need to measure the thickness of the shims with a caliper or with a micrometer. Here we show how to measure the shims of our D1200 engine. Both shims have a thickness of 0.6 mm and are reusable. For our AB1300 motor, we also need to use two shims of 0.6 mm each, making a total of 1.2 mm. The measured thickness of the two new shims in this case is 1.228 mm. If the shims vary too much, you can file them down evenly until the desired thickness is achieved. The shims have a dual function. First, they serve as a tread for the drive shaft, so as not to damage the crankcase itself. Second, by choosing the thickness of the shims, you can adjust the clearance between the drive shaft and the distributor. Here we measure the clearance on our D1200 engine. The clearance is 2.15 mm. If you don't know how many shims to use and how thick they should be, you can follow the guidelines described in the VW workshop manual. This drawing shows some important dimensions. Small letter A is the depth of the bore in the crankcase, up to against the plane where the shims will lie. Small letter B is the length of the drive shaft, not including the narrowed part that slides into the crankcase. Small letter C is the thickness of the shims. With this table, by measuring the length of the drive shaft and the depth of the crankcase bore, you can determine which shims to use. We will take the measurement on an old D1200 crankcase. The left crankcase half is disassembled and empty, which makes it easier to show how this is done. Using a caliper, measure the depth of the bore from the outside of the crankcase to the tread on which the shims lie. We read 131.18 millimeters. This is the value small letter A on the drawing. Measure at different points and compare the values to make sure the crankcase is not damaged. Next, we measure the length of the drive shaft without the narrowed part at the bottom that is supposed to slide into the crankcase. We measure a length of 85.32 millimeters. This is small b on the drawing. Here also, measure at several points to make sure there has been no wear on the drive shaft. Now if we go to look at the table from the VW workshop manual, we see that the measured values match those in the fourth column. So in this D1200 Type 1 engine, according to this table, there should be two shims of 0.6 mm under the drive shaft. A total of 1.2 millimeters. If you have no more reference points, then the following method for determining the thickness of the shims is more interesting. Basically, what you want to achieve is that the cams at the bottom of the distributor grab enough into the slots of the drive shaft 
with a degree of play. The thickness of the shims will determine the clearance. We show the principle through separate parts. Between the distributor and the drive shaft, the spring will soon take up the slack. Earlier in this video, we measured the play of a standard Type 1 engine. The play was 2.15 mm. We then measure the length of the cams of the distributor. The value is 4.35 mm. The play we just measured is half the length of the cams. With the clamp mounted, bring the drive shaft and the distributor together as they should be mounted in the crankcase. The spring should not be placed between them for now. Measure the length of both, from the bottom of the clamp bracket to the plane where the shims will rest on the drive shaft. We measure a value of 127.83 mm. We previously measured the bore in the crankcase, which is 131.18 mm. The length of the distributor and the drive shaft together is 127.81 mm. Note that this is measured from the clamping bracket. If we mount the whole assembly without shims, the clearance would be 3.35 mm. That is too much. We wish, as mentioned earlier, that the cams of the distributor are half in the slots of the drive shaft. So the desired clearance is the length of the distributor cams divided by 2, which is 2.18 mm. The shims must fill in the difference, so 3.35 mm minus 2.18 mm, that equals 1.17 mm. Two shims of 0.60 mm come pretty close to 1.17 mm. We took the measurements several times. We came up with values between 1.16 mm and 1.21 mm. It will be a few tenths different for each engine, a few tenths difference is not a problem for this application. Two shims of 0.6 mm each will have to be used, just as the table in the VW workshop manual stated. You may well end up with different values for your engine. If the crankcase has ever been overhauled, it may be that the surface on which the shims rest was damaged. The rebuild company will then have machined the crankcase and thicker shims will be needed. But, you can quickly determine how thick the shims should be, using this technique. We will now show how to install the drive shaft on an assembled engine. Unfortunately, when you replace the drive shaft on an assembled engine, you can't check whether the tread on which the shims lie is still in good condition. You can only check and repair that when the crankcase is split. When the engine is already assembled, the first thing to do is to put the shims in the crankcase. To center them properly and prevent them from falling into the crankcase, we use a metal rod. It can also be a threaded rod or a screwdriver. Ideally, the diameter of the rod should be just a little smaller than the bore at the bottom of the crankcase so that you can center the shims. Use grease on the shims so that they will later remain in place in the crankcase. Position the rod centrally and drop the shims into the crankcase. Check that the rod is properly centered and pull it back out of the crankcase. Note that if not centered, the shims may fall into the crankcase when you install the drive shaft. As you have noticed, we are using both an AB1300 long block and also a D1200 engine. The crankcase of the D1200 is split. We'll use this one to show what happens on the inside. Now that the correct shims are in the crankcase, we can install the drive shaft. Make sure that cylinder 1 is at top dead center compression stroke when the spark plug of cylinder 1 is ready to ignite. Since the drive shaft is not yet mounted, you no longer have a point of reference regarding the position of the cylinders. 
If you do not know how to determine the compression stroke of cylinder 1, please watch video 6 before continuing. Now mount the drive shaft in the crankcase, with the narrowest part pointing towards the crankshaft pulley. The drive shaft may be rotated slightly counterclockwise. It will rotate clockwise as it slides down and engages with the teeth of the crankshaft gear. Use the special tool to install the drive shaft, as explained in video 4. Be careful not to move the shims while installing the drive shaft. Turn the handle of the special tool to loosen it from the drive shaft. The tool should now come free. If all went well, the distributor drive shaft is in place. The red mark on the crankshaft pulley, indicating that cylinder 1 will ignite, is still aligned with the two crankcase halves. Don't forget the spring. You may, with a little grease on the bottom, move the spring into place with a small gripper. The grease will ensure that the spring stays in place. We show on our AS1600 engine that the narrowest part of the drive shaft points toward the crankshaft pulley. The red mark on the crankshaft pulley is in line with both crankcase halves. We refer again to video 6 to determine the compression stroke of cylinder 1. Now the distributor may be mounted. Position the smallest half at the bottom of the distributor in the direction of the crankshaft pulley. Push the distributor into the crankcase, turning the rotor a little to get the cams of the distributor to engage in the slots of the drive shaft. We'll discuss replacing the distributor o-ring later in this video series. If all went well, you now have a properly positioned distributor that you can adjust without hindrance. We will now explain how to assemble the drive shaft when the crankcase halves are split. You don't need any special tools for this. In the left crankcase half, we will first mount the drive shaft of the distributor. When the crankcase halves are split, you can take a look at the area under the shims. If that plane is clearly worn in, then the crankcase will need to be machined. Machining and line boring the crankcase will have to be done by an engine overhaul shop. The two 0.6mm shims will then have to be replaced with shims of a different thickness. The thickness of the new shims can be read in the table of your VW workshop manual. Contrary to the situation with the assembled engine, where the shims had to be placed first, because otherwise they would not get past the crankshaft gear, with split crankcase halves the shims can be fitted together with the drive shaft. Push the spring into the drive shaft, using a little grease to keep the spring in place. Slide the drive shaft together with the shims and the spring into the crankcase. Turn the drive shaft until the smallest part is pointing towards the crankshaft pulley. This is only true for a VW Type 1 engine. For a Type 3 or Type 4 engine you will have to consult the VW workshop manuals. The drive shaft must remain in place when you mount the crankshaft. Therefore, make a mark on the drive shaft and on the crankcase. You may now mount the distributor with the smallest half at the bottom on the crankshaft pulley side. Turn the rotor a little to get the distributor to engage the drive shaft. Return the drive shaft to its base position before installing the crankshaft. The paint dots will help you find the correct position. Next, assemble the crankshaft 
with the connecting rod of cylinder 1 in the top dead center. We will explain the assembly of the crankshaft and camshaft later in this video series, when we rebuild the engine. Hopefully, it has become clear, while watching video 04 and 05, that the correct positioning of the drive shaft is very important. We will come back to this topic at the time when we start to rebuild the engine. In the next video, we will explain how a four-stroke engine works and how to determine the ignition timing of cylinder one in such an engine. You will need this knowledge before you start rebuilding your Type 1 VW engine. More information about all the parts and tools used in this video series can be found as comments below each video on our YouTube channel. Keep a close eye on our newsletter for new videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you soon.